Hey everybody. Hey Nirvana. Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Alive. Yay. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on, sister? Hold on, let me put this music down first. Okay. All right. I love your uh, I love your short hair and your haircut. That whole that whole look looks so nice on you. I'm still getting used to it. <laughs> You are you? I think it looks so beautiful on you. Thank you. Sometimes I miss my hair, and then sometimes I'm glad I cut it. But it's weird when I like touch my old hair; it feels so dense and so like I don't know. Like I can feel all the I don't know, like the stress and all the and all that hard stuff. I'm like, it's good that I cut it off because I needed to start fresh. You know? Yeah. Yeah um yeah i was gonna you know ask you the next question like what made you do it but just you know to just start fresh yeah I, okay okay because usually i just cut my hair because i'm tired of it <laughs> it was my first yeah. time i never cut my hair i had never dyed it like and then i just cut it off <laughs> looks good on you looks good on you i love it all right, sister. So, what topic do you want to jump on today? I don't know. Like, so, like last night, I feel like the one thing that I, I was like, was so in my face was like the importance of, um, like surrendering and moving through fear, like so you could release and be like, you know, just like calm mm -hmm. yeah yeah because like um, i've been so much chaos like there's just so much chaos going on so much stuff to like get people to be afraid and feeling out of their power but it's like we just need to like move through it so that we could be in our our like sovereignty and in our true self you know yes yes that i agree with I agree with surrendering. Um, surrendering to yourself. Is that surrendering to everyone? Hey, peace, peace. That's um my friend Bridget. She's awesome. I love her. <laughs> um, so is that like surrendering to your emotions? Or just surrendering to the universe? Or just stop like not no longer holding yourself back surrendering or is it all of it yeah i feel like all of it because i think it's like at least i noticed with myself it was kind of like oh i have this idea of what i should be doing or where i should be or what's to come or what we need to do and i'm gonna like focus on that and getting there and there but then it's like but you mm -hmm. out and like you actually hold yourself back from it because you're not flowing like to flow mm -hmm. through the process and to be open to like all the divine blessings and energy and all the like divine inspiration and guidance, you have to be in a flow of surrender in order to like do it or else you're going to be like blocking yourself off from your own like inner knowing and inspiration. So I feel like it's like surrendering just overall to like your path, yourself, how you feel in any moment, like even if you're feeling bad or you're angry or you know you feel hurt or resentful or whatever you feel like surrendering to your emotions and letting them teach you or show you like hey i need to heal there's something right here i need to heal there's something you know that we need to pay attention to yes most definitely i agree with that that is um that is always the best way to heal when you surrender mm -hmm. when you're able to let go and surrender to your emotions yourself with the universe with the flow that way you can um 
can also manifest that way. Surrender is always that's a big key. That I didn't think about that. Surrendering. Surrendering um surrendering to yourself first and foremost, you know. So that's that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. So um do you want to let everyone know how we met? We don't have to, you know, get into like specifics, but like, oh, we, 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 uh, we met like in, um, it was at Shasta. Yes. Yes. At the, re at a retreat. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Met at a, like, well, for you, you were leaving the, like the training retreat yeah yeah going to the reunion retreat but it was like an overlap yes yes and i saw you and i was like oh and it was so funny because that whole crew were you guys like the first crew for for um that that beginning journey because whenever i've seen you guys oh no the first crew was over there in uh chicago but yeah but it was as if, though, I knew all of you when I saw you. Like, innately, I was like, oh. you know, because I, I always watch you guys. <laughs> it was just like, um, yeah, it was just as if I knew you very well. Yeah. Um, I got certified in Sedona. My, like, my retreat was, like, I think the retreat right before the Shasta reunion. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. That's that's good. That's good. So we're both very spiritually intuitive. We're both spiritual intuitives. That's what we should tell people. <laughs> She's intuitive. We're everybody. Is. Ev everybody is. Everybody is. But we practice our in our. We actually use our intuition. We actually use our spiritual gifts. Everybody has the ability to do everything. Everyone is their own psychic. Everyone's their own healer. Everything, you know? Um, so, yeah. So, one of the things that I did want to talk based on was the, the rise in the divine feminine. Is, are you okay with that? Yeah. <laughs> and, um... The rise in the divine feminine in every aspect of what that means spiritually, um, in in um, society. But let's start with spirituality. What does that mean to you? The rise of the divine feminine. I feel like the divine feminine is like the essence of creation. Like the masculine is a supportive fabric, but the feminine is like the creative energy, like the Shakti, like the force, the creative force, the life, the spark of life. So to me, it's like everything. You can't have, you can't have life without the feminine aspect. Just how like in earth, like you can't, like for humans, like everyone has to birth through a woman. There's no one on this earth who didn't birth through a woman, whether even animals, like you have to come through the feminine to exist and that's just like the way of creation so it's like this like eternally eternally like omnipotent ever flowing energy that we can all tap into that we all have but like I feel like if you have a womb you're particularly blessed because you are like a reflection of the mother because you have the womb you are able to create you have that like dark you know portal like zero point energy portal like within you and your in your vessel so it's important to like be really mindful of it and nurture it and be like very intentional about what where you're putting your energy your creative energy because like you have the power of the universe like inside of you even males have it too but it's just i feel like it's not as like it's not as I don't want to say potent, but I guess that's like the word on my mouth. Like it's not as potent as the divine feminine because we have a womb space. And so we're like reflections of the divine mother. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And whenever a uh, spirit talks to me, they always say second to the mother, right? Because the mother is creation. Mm -hmm. um, 
Um, so I totally agree uh, that the feminine principle, the feminine principle, the divine feminine herself, because what I'm learning is there's two different, well, it's, it's all in the same, it's all encompassing, it's all in under the same umbrella. But when spirit talks to me, there's, they speak of the ascension. And they said that the very principle of ascension is, is um, divine feminine. Um, so I had to look up the word principle, you know, I'm, I, because I'm always saying principle, so I wanted to know what it meant. And it basically means the very fundamentals of spiritual awakening, the very fundamentals of acknowledging yourself as a spiritual being is the divine feminine in order to even know yourself as a spiritual person you're tapping into the that divine the feminine principle which is spirituality the intuition um and the ascension which is the rise in consciousness um the rise in consciousness which is what we tap into every so often when we you know when i do my readings or when we do our Akashic readings, that all anything spiritual is the principle of the divine feminine. And obviously creation, that's when you get into, you know, all of it, all of it is divine feminine. That's why under patriarchy, which is, which is the father, you know, I also looked up the word patriarchy versus matriarchy. Patriarchy is under the line of the father. Patriarchy is in the name of the father. So when you're patriotic, patriarchy, you're, you're, you are, uh, you're upholding a masculine society and the masculine society has suppressed the divine feminine principle, which is spirituality and replace the spirituality. There's religion. Religion is patriarchy, mm -hmm. uh, healing, healing is feminine. That's the principle of divine feminine. As a nurse, I know under patriarchy, under the principle of the father, we don't advise people to heal in the medical field. We tell them to take medicine. We tell them that they're incapable of healing themselves. Here's a pill. Here's a drug. Here's a pharmaceutical. No, don't take natural herbs. We'll put it in a pill form for you and sell it to you. So that's all the patriarchal society. So patriarchy has been poisonous. And it's not to say the like we like you said, patriarch like the masculine is 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 needed. It's not said it's it's that it needs to be a balance of that masculine and that feminine. And right now it's a return of the divine feminine, the very principle the very fundamentals of the divine feminine is the very construct of this universe is the very construct of the fabric of our society. And that's the, that's why our society is in detriment because we haven't, we have, we don't have the fundamentals, the principles of the divine feminine, which is the healing, mm -hmm. which is the spirituality which is the, not everything has to be commerce. Mm -hmm. Not everything has to be, oh, I got to get, you got to get. It has to be a flow of even exchange, but energetically too, you know? You know how Telsa speaks of free energy? They didn't want to hear that. You know, the whole combat with, I um, uh, forget who's the name, Edison and... Um, and Tesla, when they're talking about energy versus, you know, so to me, um, the divine feminine, that that's encompassing of a revolution in itself, because we need that, that very principle of that femininity, which is so deep, so deep, you know? Well, one thing I feel too is like, we all have the feminine energy in us. And I don't know, one thing that's coming up is like how we are all aspects of source and we're all like, we all come from the mother. So within our DNA, like, and within our bones, like the energy, the, the fluid within our bones 
and that life force energy within us is our like kundalini energy but it's also like how you said like comp when you mentioned commerce like everything in creation is an energy exchange everything has a cause and effect but there's this infinite like there's infinite knowledge is light there's infinite knowledge infinite light in creation but it's just about what spectrum are you like opening yourself up to receive and so within your own body in your own dna you have like even though through like patriarchal systems like they don't teach people how to heal themselves it's like you have to connect with your own inner knowing connect with your own dna and your own healing and your own remembrance to remember okay my body has the ability to tell me how to heal so what does my body need for me how do i honor my body you know or honoring like the signals that your vessel sends you to get that healing because that's like the feminine energy like everything is an energy exchange but like different realms of existence communicate in different ways so there might be like um there might be like an energetic that is trying to communicate to somebody but that makes them maybe like crave a certain food or like if their body is like telling them like movement like because feminine energy it's very like it's movement it's flow so i feel like even though we live in a society that like basically <laughs> is poisonous like everything that like most of the foods we eat the things we drink the water that we shower with the products we use everything is like has something in it that could, could cause harm to us but it's i think it's about like how will you alchemize it and how will you use it how will you use the because since everything is energy and everything has to have balance, how will you use the force of this, like, patriarchal system that seeks to, to, like, destroy you or to stop you from, you know, being your sacred feminine self as a man or a woman? How will you use that energy to alchemize it and instead to, like, make it, uh, like, not force you to embody your feminine, but activate you to embody your feminine? Like, how will you how will you find ways to honor your feminine in yourself when like the is telling you that like you can't because everything is energy you know even even though like i feel like that's the reason why certain people don't or certain beings don't want the, don't like the idea of free energy is because it's all about it's a game of control but mm -hmm. that you as a human you as a consciousness you are i was like watching this thing and it was like um, about how like companies sell all of our data like everything you do every time you enter your phone number on something every time you go to a website every time you do something like like humanity doesn't realize we are the commodity all these companies all these marketing agencies all these like everything religion everything is wanting our attention we are the commodity so you have to realize since you are the vessel you are the instrument that everything is after well why does everything want to control you why is everything trying to suppress you? Why is everything trying to limit you? And you have to tap in inside yourself to say, well, what is the power in me? Mm -hmm. That makes me this commodity that these these entities want. Why do these why do these companies want my information? Why does Google Analytics want to track everything that I do online? You know, why do these ad companies? Why if I Google something, why does Instagram advertise to me <laughs> like something that I Googled? Like, why is this? And why is it that like you know my energy and desire because if i'm looking something online there's some maybe i want to look into something or des desire something you know like why is it and what is it about my energy i see this question in here and i was like trying to read at the same time go ahead go ahead read it patriarchy dominated this is from bridge to elegance patriarchy dominated the piscean age but as we move out of the pisces age into the age of aquarius it's the return of the divine feminine yes yes but I <laughs> I feel like what's so important right now about transitioning into a new age that we have to realize it, we're going through a tr stage of transition. It's just like when you are like, you have to shed off the layers of the old. So we have to, as a, as a culture, as a society, we have to look back at the old. We have to look at all these cycles that we've been repeating over and over and over all these ways. And even within yourself, like what destructive behaviors do you have against yourself? Like for me, like sometimes like lately i've been eating cheese <laughs> i've been eating cheese and i feel like oh my god i've been eating cheese i'm supposed to be vegan but it's like well 
what about it is making me eat cheese? Like, what about me not being disciplined in myself to know, like, cheese is not really good for me. Why am I eating it? And also, like, well, what what's the part of me that's, like, wanting to eat cheese? What do I need to release so that I could, like, really eat foods that nourish my life force instead of foods that want to take my life force? Because we, we can't just say, like, oh, you know, we're in the age of Aquarius. Now everything is going to be okay. <laughs> we have work to do. We have shedding to do. We have to, like... I was listening to this song by um, this singer Lava and one of the lyrics was like, are we ready for a new age? Are we ready for the new earth? And I was like, oh, damn. Like, are we ready? Like, we have, if we want to embody our divine feminine, well, are you going to look at your feminine shadow? Are you going to look at her? <laughs> or are you going to... Exactly. 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 <laughs> exactly. That's, that's the hardest part. Um uh to be ready for the transition like you said be ready for the divine feminine be ready for um the new earth be ready for because i do believe there's going to be a split have you heard that they said there's going to be a split because there's people that are not going to be able to to like um synchronize with that vibrational um like there's going to be people going this way and others are going to just be going that way because they're, they're so low in vibration. They're so low in their thinking and their actions and, and, um, and everything that they're just going to, it's just going to be a complete split. So getting ready for that transition to the divine feminine, the time of the Aquarius is about, like you said earlier, surrendering and, um, healing, allowing self to flow with the universe, and also to um, also to face the face the shadow, mm -hmm. face face you know face your traumas, your shadows, and um, work on them, heal them. You know, the fact that you're aware of them makes it that you're able to transition. Because there's people who do not believe they have issues that don't understand that they do have issues. And don't acknowledge them. So if you, those That's, are the very basics. Like it's okay if somebody doesn't want to look at their issues or whatever. Like it's okay. Like we all are on this. Like everyone, everyone's on a different path. Like we're all uniquely created. Like there's no one else like us in creation. Like we are all unique mm -hmm. creations. And it's okay if you're not ready to heal something. It's okay if you're not ready to move through a cycle. It's okay because everyone's not going to do ascension is i feel like ascension is made every breath every decision every day everything you do you're constantly ascending you're constantly raising but even though like for me it's like well like she says i can't go back to cheese it makes me sick if I eat it, my body's rejecting all kind of food i'm not supposed to eat yeah my body does the same thing like my stomach will hurt me and it's like well why do i keep doing this if like it's hurting my stomach like you know but it's like that's my own choice <laughs> to decide well i really want this like all of she she must be ascending i mean well you know she must her vibration must be changing because mm -hmm. i can't eat cheese it makes me literally sick now and i eat it my body is rejecting all kinds of food yeah that's that's transformation in itself when you can't eat or do the same things that you used to do yeah. but but in your case as well you know um, there's also the, the, um, if you, if you do want the cheese, you know, it's not, it's like people who like chocolate and that are allergic to chocolate. Yeah. There's people there's so there's, um, that urge. It's like you're fighting within yourself. Well, um, you go ahead. But like, it's kind of, I feel like for me, it's also like DNA healing of like, okay, these foods that I'm craving that you know, I ate all my life when I was a kid. What about like, what part of me needs to be healed so that I can stop wanting these foods? Because the way that we eat is very ingrained in our DNA. Like I eat the foods I eat because my grandmother cooked them for me. And then my mother cooked them for me. And my grandmother's grandmother cooked those foods for her and for her mother. So it's like, it's not, it's, a, it's, it's work like when you're changing your diet like you're literally like going changing your dna and your ancestral patterns like it's not it's like 
it's hard and especially too like it's like oh well I know that like you know my frequency like if I if I ever have times where like I would eat when I was going from vegetarian or vegan or plant-based eating when I was still eating more meat I realized how anxious it would make me feel and how bad like I would feel after and it was like whoa like my vibration like I can't like in order for me to sustain myself where I want to be I can't eat this stuff because it makes me like it doesn't make me feel good you know but it's like even then, like, I don't shame myself if I eat it because it's like, oh, okay, well, that's just, a, like, another area where, like, I can... Well, that's, see, that's what I, what I do. I'm, I'm worst. Y'all talking about cheese? I eat meat. <laughs> I'm supposed to be... I always go back and forth, back and forth. And it's hard because I'm cooking for my kids, and my kids are used to eating meat because you know i didn't decide being a vegan until like in my 20s late 20s and i had my kids in my early 20s mm -hmm. so i'm so used to just eating meat and so i go back and forth i'll stop for like a month no meat well not a month i think the longest i have gone was two weeks mm -hmm. but then i I'll see that food around me because I also cook. I'll cook the chicken. I'll cook the like, the mm. this and the that. And I'm like, how you cooking? I want to eat it. <laughs> but okay, like, I think everyone is meant to be vegan. Like I don't think everyone's body can sustain being vegan. Like we all have different needs. We don't all need to eat the same and think the same and do the same thing and like the same stuff. <laughs> like I don't. Mm -hmm. think that, like, yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, unless. I'm having a session or if I'm doing some spiritual work or if I know that, Hey, I have to do this. So I'll get prepared for a week. And, you know, you know, I go back and forth with myself constantly just doing for my spiritual work. I will, but I want to make it a lifestyle, you know? And so like the other day I told my kids, okay, no more sugar in the house, no more meat. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> they start freaking out like i'm like yeah you're not gonna eat it no mom dad did you hear what happened dad mom's going crazy <laughs> uh, I, my little, like i try to take him off sugar but i try to, what i do like i'll bring home like like desserts that are made with like natural natural sugars and then i'll oh, like, okay. like do you like this and it's i also I'm like i can't like, I feel like sugar is such an addiction, especially for kids. Like, it's in everything. Sugar is in everything. So I feel like I, I'm like, oh, I don't want him to be, like, hate. Because I feel like my relationship to food is kind of, you know, and I don't want him to, like, hate eating because he can't have what he wants. But it's like, dang. It's hard to, like, change kids because they're picky. And they're is that your brother or your, your kid? or? Oh, no, I don't have any kids. It's my little brother. My little brother. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, with kids, it's hard because, you know, they advertise it to them and they push them in their face. So, like, I'll try not to watch, like, your conventional television. We, Huh? They go to school. Like, their school lunch is, like, sugar. Yes. Everything is sugar for them. It's, and it's hard to keep everything away because then they get influenced by other children and, it's a whole thing, girl, but, but, but the one thing I, go ahead. I think that growth and change is made by restriction or by like free will. Free will. Mm -hmm. I feel because now, well, free will for two things. First thing in terms of the diet thing is we want to kind of test yourself without any boundaries what would you do you know what i mean if there's restrictions well then yeah there's no free will i have to do it this way and then it's like like the kid that has always been restricted and all of a sudden they're able to go run free then they're overdo it you know what i mean yeah. so when you already just have freedom 
you kind of know what kind of character you have. Yeah. Are you the type to over abuse, over exceed your freedom and overindulge? Or are you the type to type kind of pace yourself and see how things really go? Mm -hmm. so I believe there's more growth in free will. The second thing is that this very, when I talk to spirit, they say that this very planet, this very realm we're in is based on free will. So technically to be governed is against free will you know anything that is is that tells you what you can or cannot do it's against the very construct of this realm which is based on the principles but there goes that word principle of freedom true freedom the feminine principle the true infinite principle of freedom so yeah to me there's way more growth in freedom than restriction you can't you can't grow in if there's restrictions mm -hmm. so what then, do you think i think because like for me uh like even using like current situation i don't like restriction it actually makes me want to do the opposite <laughs> so um i don't think i personally and i feel like even when i restrict myself like with eating or i try to force myself to do things i don't stick to it like it has to be a free will choice and it has to be something that i want to do like a deeper purpose you know like this person like i don't feel like eating cheese or eating meat changes who i am it doesn't change like my energy like it doesn't it doesn't change me in that way um but then I, i'll notice like like I, beef i can't eat beef anymore i don't know why like i just even thinking about eating beef i'm like you know but like no hamburgers at all no <laughs> liked beef but i think that like i don't think restriction works because like i think that's why a lot of people fail at things because i think you have to go through the process of like letting yourself like make the choice to do something like especially like with all this covid stuff like the mask and stuff i never liked it from the beginning because i was just like what how are you gonna restrict my breathing who do you think you are to restrict my breathing like if i want to in this air let me breathe it in like there's all kind of toxic stuff in this air. There's heavy metal in this air. There's like, like there's all kind of stuff in this air. So if I want to breathe it, then why do you care? Let me breathe it. They, don't, they don't care though. They don't care that part. Like you don't care if I die. Stop playing games. <laughs> yeah. And on a level, like you ever like for example. We had that conversation before. Um, I don't like. Do you care if I like mention not? if I mentioned like a part of, okay so like, we had a conversation before about like Halo and it was kind of like you can say his name I, like, if you're not afraid because he says he's not ashamed of his name well, so go ahead and say it Lucifer Halo I like saying Halo um oh wait this question says hey girl to run mm -hmm. so how do you make lifestyle change you feel it's necessary without restriction is there a difference between restriction and discipline well that's a good question I feel like for me, I've been trying to make lifestyle changes since 2015. I've been trying to be vegan and I've been trying to be like, treat my body sacred, let myself like honor myself. So I feel like it's a process. And I feel like just for me personally, every time I try to like restrict myself from a desire, whether it be food or like a desire to like exercise my sexuality or anything like I would always like restrict myself so much that whenever I got tired of restricting myself, I would like overindulge and like the overindulging would like put me into a cycle of like feeling really guilty about it and then shaming myself and feeling bad. And it was like a negative cycle. So for me, I feel like it's the best way is like discipline in a lifestyle change or making small changes. So like, for example, right now, I'm getting ready to do this program. It's called Sacred Woman with um, Queen of Fool. I don't know if you guys ever heard of her, but it's like a whole book. Oh, yeah. Uh, she has like a workshop and yeah. stuff, right? This yeah. And it's like, it's a lifestyle change. Like, it's a big thing. And one of the things that you have to do is like, wake up at 4 a.m. Girl, I don't, I'm a night owl. Like, I'll be up late. Like, I like being up to like 11 o'clock. But um, do you have a circle? I don't know what that is. But um, 
yeah so like i feel i started to prepare myself knowing that i'm getting ready to make this lifestyle change because i love myself and i want i want better quality relationships in my life i want to be more in touch with my feminine energy and be able to manifest what i want because i don't want to work a regular job anymore i don't need i i don't need to be going nine to five every day to work that is like oh no honey like my energy does i don't like it it feels restrictive to like have and i don't like having to ask for days off like I have it said in my mind that, like, in order for me to live the life I want, I have to change. <laughs> oh, I'll DM you. I'm doing it as, like, a course. But I do want to have a woman's circle. But, um, yeah, like, I just feel like making change in my life, I realize it's like, okay, if I know that starting in October, I have to start waking up at 4.30 a.m. Because I want to, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to really do it then let me start now waking up. Like I, my body will wake me up at 4 a.m. I'll get up, I write my affirmations, I journal, I write down notes of my dreams, I'll pull cards, you know, I have my candle lit, I'll light my, my herbs, and I'll do uh, I do you that. Do them? Yeah, I you do. You pull cards even? Oh, that's what's up. Do yeah. it, girl. But mm -hmm. then it gets to be like six o'clock and I don't have to be at work, I don't have to leave the house for work until eight. I'll let myself go back to sleep for 30 minutes to like, go back in, in like sleep a little bit because I know that like I like to sleep I like to dream so it's like it's all about balance like I don't restrict myself and tell myself okay I have to get up at 4 30 a.m I can't fall back asleep if my body tells me to no I know I have the intention to get up earlier but if I decide that I want to go back to sleep after like writing my affirmations and pulling my cards or writing down my dreams like I don't do everything every day like I don't pull cards every morning but like I wake up I write my affirmations down because that has been like one of the best things I've implemented in my morning routine to wake up and affirm myself. Like I am light. I am powerful. I am abundant. Like I am grateful. I am love. Like when I write that, when I write down my affirmations, my day. <coughs> so perfect. So what do you, but what do you think, Melissa? Like, how do you feel like you like to make change? Like, um, I want to actually go back to what she says between, um, she says, what is the difference between restriction and discipline? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I want to say the two are oranges and apples because restriction isn't, isn't discipline. They're two different things. Um, discipline is something that you have to kind of work on to become if that isn't innately in you i'll tell you right now i ain't got no discipline i had to learn to be disciplined i ain't got none why do you think i'm still eating meat girl <laughs> i do not have it i'll go on and off i have to really be like boom spirit i need your help like spirit had to help me to do a seven day fast oh yeah where i the mineral water yes i did a, a seven day fast and that was spirit that was spirit all day because I did not even go through the natural feeling of hunger for those seven days. Wow. So I kind of cheated. You know, I had, I had my higher self come in and help me. And I felt, oh, I'm cheating. I'm not cheating. <laughs> but girl, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That is That's not like you are your higher self that's not cheating you can't cheat. i mean i did not feel i felt energetic because what i learned is there's um breatharianism this goes all about discipline right here so there's breatharianism and this guy his name is elomine elomite something like that i keep forgetting to tell people who he is um, but he's on YouTube and he explains what breatharianism is. It's not starving your way into not eating. You have to have a pick up a practice of energy work, qigong, meditation. And I think what I was able to do is meditate and tap in and tell spirit to hold me in that the light the light energy in my back, my spine, open up that light and just sustain me. Wow. I didn't eat for seven days and I was jumping and running and jumping and running. <laughs> you would not be able to tell I was fasting, girl. 
I want so to- that was cheating. <laughs> that's not cheating. That, I mean, that's not cheating. That's spirituality. That's how deep spirituality is. People don't know. That's how serious. If you know how to talk to the God within you, right? The house of God is within you, right? And you are your higher self. If you know how to tap into that God within you, you can, I, don't, I guess it was not cheating. I don't know what you would call it, but it wasn't the the lower self. It wasn't the me. Because um, for me, going hungry for, for two two days, I start to get a headache. Oh, yeah. I start to feel, ugh. You know, you just, ugh. I hate life. You want to smack your kids. No, I was <laughs> Honestly, I'm just joking, guys. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what that's what that's what breatharianism is, real quick. That's a totally different topic, but that's what breatharianism is. It's tapping into that life force chi energy that's within you, opening up that crown chakra and letting in the natural flow where you can sustain yourself without food or water. That's a whole different, that's a whole different set of level of games of freedom of, it's crazy girl. It's a totally different thing. I have a question though, because I feel like, part of the human experience is like being in this physical body and so shouldn't we enjoy things about it like, like- I, I think at this point it's it's done that's what spirit tells me like eating and that- living because like, like i love fruit i love fruit. Well, well i mean it's not to say you don't have your options and you can eat and but the true ascension of the divine feminine Mm -hmm. that we are capable as human beings that I have witnessed and have felt and have seen and have looked up and researched is to say we are gods. Human beings are gods. We should not have to go to work. No. Period. (laughs) And when we say that, people are like, what do you mean? How are you going to make money? And then the income and then see that's patriarchal thinking. That is that yeah, infinite. father, that in that infinite, that not the infinite, the uh, restriction infinite. that boop. Nope. Yeah. I need to make something out of something in order to give you something. Right. When no, the rise of the divine principle, the principle of the divine feminine is to say you are God, and if you want to, you can live without food or water you can become a light body and i've had those moments where my like i've told people like i've had my higher self come in and seven days without food and i was jumping and skipping and and that's like i said that's because i tapped in i was doing two three hours of meditation and i i was doing that breath work that breath work where i was in trance and like i said i did feel like i was cheating I have an appoint appointment in a in a second. Y'all save this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll save it. I'll save it. But that's that is what the rise of the divine feminine means. It's not a gender based because both men and women have this. All people, men, women, black, white, orange, purple, green, it, you know, human beings have the ability to live off of chi prana. Mm-hmm. Tesla, like I said earlier, Tesla was talking about free energy. We can be doing so much more than we are as human beings. So have- there's no more. Go ahead, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, just like we have so much potential and we should learn how to tap into our higher abilities because I'm actually really amazed. Like, that's actually really inspiring to me that you were able to like draw in the energy of your higher self to sustain you for seven days because. If you could do that, like just off of that, imagine if you could do that every day of your life and how much, how you, what life you would manifest, what kind of lifestyle you would be living, where you would be if you did that all the time. If you were just like, what is that word? Avatar? Like if you were your avatar self, how would you live? Because I also agree, like we're, the earth is so abundant. There's so much, there's so much land, there's so much space, there's so much like 
Yes. Trees, like, just the way that nature grows is infinite. And, like, we shouldn't keep putting ourselves into systems that try to limit and restrict us because our energy is infinite. And eventually, like, you're going to just want to flow. Like, you're just, you're going to get sick of it eventually, and you're going to want to flow. But, like, I don't know, I'm just so inspired. Like, dang, you really did that for seven days. Like, cause I, I, have, I have it on, I mean, I don't like to pro promote, but it's not a promote. To me, it's not promotion. I have it on my YouTube. I was in Florida for a month, and I stayed at, I was very lucky, off-season on Airbnb, you can stay there for months on end in front of the fr um, Panama Beach um, city. Um, and I was just feeling myself like the water dragon. I end up talking to my higher, you know, I have to be careful what I say because certain things they're telling, they tell me not to tell people because I've been attacked. But I've spoken to my higher self in the water because I'm the water dragon. So I have aspects, aspects of myself in the water. I have aspects of myself everywhere, you know, because I've told people who I am. And I I just went in. It was like a deep spiritual it told me they told me a lot of stuff that that kind of I kind of pulled back from because it's like, well, I'm not ready to become God yet. I'm not ready to become my higher self. And that could be something within me. I need to really, I have to be ready to be God. I can't explain it because I guess all my life, I've always been told I'm small, I'm small, I'm small. And then when you do the spiritual work, you tap into that divine feminine, you realize you're infinite, bigger than this dimension and then they tell you you're a gatekeeper. And then you're like, wait, hold up, hold up. Let me just, let me just figure this out. I was just doing a seven day fast. Y'all went too far. <laughs> I just wanted to see if I could do it. <laughs> no, but you know what? I feel like, like I already am my higher self and I don't have to do anything to be her because I am her. And like, if we decide whatever we want to do, like, I just feel like the best thing for me is following my heart. When I don't follow my heart, I feel like I betray myself. And like the last year I didn't follow my heart and I was like in situations and I was just like, what the hell? Like this hurts. <laughs> like this feels so uncomfortable. This hurts. I don't like it. And so I feel like when I, I say that I, I am my higher self because I am her like I I am her and I chose to be here right now and I chose to have these experiences and I I will not judge myself and I will not um like I will no longer shrink myself and that was like a part of me also cutting my hair because people used to say that I couldn't cut my hair like oh you have to keep your hair that's who you are blah 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 but it's like yeah yes and no like I'm not defined by how I look on the outside like I am like you said like my energy is bigger than this simulation this where we live like my energy is bigger than that and I can't I don't want to like tell myself what I can't do instead I want to see what I can do and I don't know I feel like for me embodying my higher self is just about like speaking from my heart and because I honestly like I have this feeling that there's so many different life forms that everyone is right in every life form that you live as you don't eat and I feel like there's something special about being a human and having emotion and like eating and interacting with different people and like being hurt you know and experiencing pain because I used to tell my friend I was talking to one of my friends and I was like I actually love heartbreak and I realized I was talking from a traumatized version of myself but I learned a lot through like heartbreak but I also learned like I feel like I'm in a point now where it's like okay I had enough heartbreak like I'm good off that like it's time for me to embody myself and love myself and just like be be free and free myself from like restriction because I, I understand what you mean but like I don't know if I'm ready to embody my higher self because maybe on a certain level that's why I never really had the discipline to do a fast I've only tried to do a fast one time well I've tried multiple times but I've only tried to like really do a water fast one time and the second day I had to eat because I was like shaking so bad I was I lived alone so that was one thing. I lived alone. 
I was convulsing, like my whole body was shaking. I couldn't even walk to the bathroom. I couldn't like, it was just like my body was having like a. Well, you want to do it safely. Well, I didn't just like, um, one thing I did do, and luckily like my husband and I've done research on like certain things. One thing you don't want to do is shock the body and say, mm -hmm. I'm not going to eat today. Cause then your body's going to be like, Oh my God, we're starving. We're starving. And that's the thing with breatharianism is that you're, 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 um, first you have to have discipline, mm -hmm. you know, like we can't, I can't have finished eating a turkey meal and now I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to be breatharian next year. Like, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it has to start off with the discipline. Start eating um, a plant-based diet. One mm -hmm. thing, the, gen the gentleman I listened to, he says that diets, because he's on a different level. He's on, I would consider him an ascended master. If he's not if he, eating, yeah. If he's not eating, right? right? <laughs> he's, saying, he, he, he's saying that diets are simply based on discipline can you be a vegan truly a vegan well we were gonna say plant-based can you eat plant-based because veganism actually goes in like what you wear it, it gets deep but as far as plant-based can you solely eat only a plant base mm -hmm. and and not drop and do this and that so if you can see yourself doing that then you do a 21 day fast. He has a whole retreat. It's a whole thing. But he says also, it's not only that, the only thing that makes it a God thing where you're an ascended master is meditation. You have to be able to meditate. You have to be able to understand the life force energy, the Qigong, the prana, the Holy Spirit for a spirit for the religious people. You have to understand that you, you are a light body and you exist multidimensionally and that you have to be able to tap into that breath work. It's, it's, it takes time. So you have to be able to absorb. He says you can absorb energy from the earth. Like if you're in a cold, cold area, you absorb energy from the sun. You absorb energy exchange from the plants, the trees, energy is all around you. So that's when you're basically free. And then I'm thinking, okay, so if there's a, such a thing like that, that means we're so disconnected with our divinity. People are starving. And that's the same thing. This, this guy made a joke. He goes, because he didn't believe in it. He doesn't believe in it. So he goes, he makes a joke like, oh, so people are starving improperly. You know, like he's making a joke like, okay, so those who died of starvation did it wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Something like that. And it's like, no, that's just how disconnected we are from the godness in us that we don't know that the human body can sustain itself. You know how in these books they say that these these people are able to do this and um, do such magical things. We are these beings. I believe that human, human beings, all of humanity, the whole world of humanity is able to do way more than we've been taught in school that we can ever be taught in education, in uh, universities, more than we can be taught in our jobs, more than anything jobs. That's a restriction. That's not discipline. Yeah. because people think they wake up to go to work. That means they have discipline. No, you go to work. Cause if you don't freaking go to work, you're not going to eat. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you have discipline. Cause look at you, you're overweight. A lot of respiratory. Cause I'm talking about from a nursing point of view. Cause I was in the medical field nurses or, or respiratory therapists. Really? They'll tell you not to smoke. Right. Cause you know, the trach, trach, trach. uh, is, the tracheotomy is in the trach, so they, they obviously can't breathe on their own. But there they go, smoking in the back. I forgot there's a, like a slang name for it. They'll, they'll have a name for it. So like restriction is not discipline. Restriction is based on power structure. Restriction is based on you can't do it. Now, what do you know your capabilities? Do you know if you have the capability not to do it? You don't. 
Do you know if you have the capability to do anything in this society? You don't. Because obviously no one has discipline. People just get up to go to work and say, well, I go to work. I have discipline. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. You don't have discipline. You just get your ass to work. Because if you didn't, you'd live in the streets. You'd be, you'd be hungry. Because <laughs> uh, you're not a breatharian. No. <laughs> wow. Well, you know what? That's why the cool thing is, is, that's why I think it's about all about free will. Because to me, like, dang, if you could really live off your breath, and the life, the life that you would manifest for yourself by like living that way and living that tapped in with nature and being able to get your energy, like that's how plants are. Like that's how like crystals, like everything is like that. And that is a part of who we are as humans. And when we decide that we want to level up in that way, we can totally do it. Because I feel like the way, the way like embodying our truest in self, like you can do anything like you said. And Oh, this dog is like really <laughs> um, <That's fine. laughs> but no i i feel like that's also about like the feminine energy like that we were talking about in the beginning like the shakti energy like your infinite creative energy because um she says how do you cultivate discipline i for me i just practice every day like what every day like like i said earlier with like my affirmations I do it every day. And if I skip a day, I don't get mad at myself for it. I just, okay, well, I skipped it today. I noticed how it made me feel off. I'm going to do it the next day. Because I think it's all about, it's it's just about you. Like, what do you want to do? What is your motivation? What is your intention behind doing that thing? Because when you get to the point that, like, for example, if I ever, like, don't want to I had this day last week where I didn't do my affirmations I didn't sleep good that night and I was at work and this lady called me and I had yelled at her on the phone and I don't like doing that because I don't like getting myself angry because then the rest of my day I'm gonna be mad so I don't I don't like that and I was like you know what if I don't do my affirmations in the morning if I don't first connect with myself if I don't first love on myself in the morning and tell myself I could do it then I'll let other people decide for me So it's like, what do you want to be disciplined in? Like, is it your diet? Is it exercise? Is it lifestyle? Like, is it, do you want to be disciplined about your, like, a certain energy in your body? Like, do you want to be disciplined with your creative energy? And then what's the intention behind it? Why do you want to be disciplined with that energy? Like, for me, I'm working on being disciplined with my sacral energy, my creative energy. Because I've had too many experiences where other people were creating with my energy and I was over here like, why, why don't I have this and that? Because you gave it away. That's why you don't have it. And you need to be more disciplined and have it for yourself. So it's like, okay, now, and I feel like once you start making choices, you start getting inspired to do stuff. Like you'll have the inspiration, like to keep following through with your discipline if you have it. But it's like, if you don't have that reason why you're doing it, like you can't like, doing stuff because it's on social media or doing stuff because you see other people doing it isn't enough. Like you have to truly want to do it in your heart for yourself because you're the one who has to do it every day. Like nobody else can jump in your body. Like, all right, well, unless you have your heart. (laughs) Like nobody outside of you is going to jump into your body and like make you be more disciplined, you know? Yeah. Unless you are your heart yourself and you, you chat it up and cheat. Nah, <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah. Um, what? Let me see. What else she say? Cultivate discipline. How to cultivate discipline? I think this one's gonna be kind of hard, but and I might tick someone off. But I think it has to do with self worth. Ooh, that's a good one. Yes. That's because. A- go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm just saying, like, that's a good one. Self-worth, yeah. Self-worth cultivates discipline yeah. without restriction. Because if when with restriction, you don't have self-worth. If you, uh, if you accept restriction in your life, if someone, you giving someone else the power to restrict your life, that means, um, that, like I said, doesn't mean you're disciplined. So, Discipline comes from self-worth. And what I say is 
Okay, the same way you're willing to go and work for someone else, do you have it in you to work for yourself? Mm -hmm. And that could be in more ways than one. That can be, do you have this discipline, aka the self-worth to, like you said, get up in the morning at 4 a.m., write in your journal your affirmations to eat healthy, to eat plant-based. Do you care about your body and how you look? And that was one of my last videos. Don't, and don't compare what you see on the internet. Don't compare what you see on the Instagram, on the YouTube, on the Facebook, on the whatever else platform there is. Anybody. Huh? I'm saying like group chats, like friends, family, like it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, because because we're not the same that's what i was telling people we're not the same so how are you gonna do what i do we not the same wait right what you do i can't necessarily do i can replicate it and remix it for me right you know what i mean um so i think discipline comes with self-worth because you value yourself enough if you're very tired of your life circumstances, yes. you're willing to do the changes. Mm -hmm. It bothers you so much. You hate the position you are in in your life that you're willing to change your eating habits, your financial habits, financial freedom, maybe starting your own business, um, tr learning a new craft, learning how to be self-sufficient mentally, spiritually, physically, getting up, and working out, you know, I watched this one lady, she works out, she looks fine. And I'm like, well, damn, I must, I, I need to, I'm not comparing myself to her. I'm like, I need some self-worth because I want to look like that. I right. know I have the body, the body type. I've seen myself in high school. You know what I meant? What I mean? So I need to have the self-worth The that brings forth the discipline because I, I want to do this for myself and I'm not caring necessarily. Another thing is people care about what other people are thinking and that's a hard, you yeah. know, that's always been a, a, a trigger. I've learned people don't think this, this COVID-19 has made me know that people don't think <laughs> like, Oh, I thought you were smart. No, you not. You stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry I had my moments. <laughs> yeah. No, it's all good, though, because people, I feel like people, a lot of people don't think for themselves. Um, like, even my grandma. This is just, I'm going to say this as an example. My grandma. I'm not getting, nobody's about to shop me with no, no one's going to sterilize me. <laughs> my grandma's like, well, aren't you going to do it, like, for me, for my health? I said, no. Like, don't you, like, well, didn't you already get it? Like, was that not enough? Like I'm, why well, I have you want me to put my reproductive like health at jeopardy? <laughs> I was like, no. Or <laughs> even like, no, because honestly, like I'm good. Like my I'm good. I take care of myself. I nourish myself. Like, and I know like this is a this is a game. Of, this is a game. This is a game of consciousness. Like I said before, you are the commodity. So. Are you going to allow your, like, are you going to really do the research? Are you really going to look into these things? Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Are you really going to, oh, <laughs> are you really, gonna, Go ahead, are you really going to take your time and, like, question things and follow your heart on something? Or are you just going to do it because someone else said you should do it? Are you going to just, like, like, because honestly, the choices you make, you have to deal with the cause and effect. So are you willing to, like, deal with the repercussion of that action? And there's no judgment. Like, I don't have any judgment for anyone who makes those choices. Like, do you, honey? Like, if, that what you, if, that's, if that's what you want to do and what's best for you, then do it. But, like, I'm not going to do it. And I don't care if you think that I, like, am not a good person or whatever for it. Because I think one thing, too, like, people aren't authentic. Like, this recently, like, with all this stuff with, like, Afghanistan and then the, the hurricane in New Orleans, 
I was just like, people don't think for themselves. And like, literally everybody like talks restrictions. about it. Restrictions. Restrictions. Yeah, like, that's what restriction is when you're not thinking on your on your own or for yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah. think yourself, what do you really think about this? Do you really care about this? Like when even like, for example, I, I never really speak on things. because I'd be like, oh, y'all people, I just feel like sometimes I don't, I shouldn't share myself that much on the internet. But like, um, or like, like, I was like, damn, like, y'all really just, like, want to ride this hard about abortion? Like, y'all really just want, like, do you guys know what they do to aborted fetuses? Like, do you know how they experiment on those living cells? Do you know, like, do you know what they're going to do to that, that, those, your genetic material when you give it to them? And I'm not shaming someone, because, like, if you have, if you have to make that choice, like, you have to make that choice, and there's no judgment there for me. Like, I respect people's choices, but it's, like, how is everybody like you know there's natural ways to have an abortion do you know there's herbs you can take to abort a baby like are you that disconnected from nature and from yourself that you need you need the medical industry industry to like do something for you oh you want to hear what i gotta say <laughs> i always bring it back to spirituality because it is time for the divine feminine to rise yeah Empower yourself. It is time for the divine feminine to rise. Yeah. And what I, and I had to do this research. I had to do a little research. I mean, I haven't done like, I'm not a scientist, so I haven't done a case study or anything, but they have said that. I've listened to these lectures where they said that the woman has the ability to procreate on her own. Mm. And that the woman had had when she was fully connected. Remember I told you how when you're when your higher self, when you really are your higher self and you're mm. really God, right? Because it's time for the principle of the divine feminine, which is God, right? Mm. And the woman was able to procreate and abort when need it be. Mm -hmm. the, she can bring on her own period. She can bring, bring on her own period if she wanted to, to get rid of this baby out of her body. And I was like, wait a minute, what? Skirt, skirt, skirt. <laughs> But, you know, I feel like, too, like, you could also communicate with that baby, like, hey, this is not the right time. I don't really think this should be your well, dad. Well, that's what that means. See, that's what that means. There's no gaps. Mm -hmm. You just said you're the higher self. You said you felt like you're the higher self, right? You mm -hmm. are the spirit. You wouldn't exist if you didn't have a spirit inside of you. You'd be a clone. <laughs> that's a whole thing in itself. You'd be a clone, right? Yeah. So you would communicate with that spirit because that spirit may that soul rather that soul can be older than you oh yeah that soul is infinite so you can you can go ahead and and say to that soul this is this and what's going on the end result would be you bringing on that of uh, your own abortion to get rid of the baby mm -hmm. if that's if you did it the right way and that's when you know you're doing it the right way yeah and then so you're not waiting four five six months into a pregnancy where that at that point it's barbaric you know well i feel and i feel like too like i don't really blame people for it because i feel like if you're so disconnected and you don't see how powerful the life force is and if you don't understand why it's a blessing you know or like how maybe that is the, what the catalyst you need to change your situation or maybe that that soul is about to teach you and help you level up your life but if you're not ready for it then talk to it and ask it if it can come back at another time ask ask it like we are we can communicate beyond the physical like Tell it what you need from it. Tell it, like, for me, I already, like, just, I know that you can, um, like, for example, uh, like, this is kind of personal, but I'm going to share it anyway, because I learned, 
like a few months ago, I learned that my mom considered doing that to me. And I had to think, I was like, damn, like, what if she did do that? Like, ooh, what would I have done? Like, when would I have come if my mom would have done that? Like, how would I be different if my mom did that? And what made her not decide to do that? You know, she was in a very rough situation at the time and she decided not to do it. And like, damn, like, I'm grateful that she made that choice because I really needed to come here and live this life. But also, like, if she would have done it, well, shit, I probably would have just been like, all right, well, I'm gonna come back. You know, how how many more, how much more time do you need? I'm gonna come back, <laughs> you know? So I just feel like that, get, and I was like, I didn't feel upset at her, but it made me think twice of like, dang, like she had her free will choice and she chose to not do it. <laughs> like she chose to like give me a chance like you know and even though I was born early which I was actually really on time like I don't know just like what would it have I'm just I don't know I'm just so grateful and I just feel like as women as we're talking about the divine feminine as feminine we need to realize the how powerful we are you bring life into creation like you bring life into creation and because you bring life into creation Treat yourself sacred. Like, everything you do is sacred. And it's a gift for somebody to lay in bed with you. Like, they should be kissing your feet. <laughs> like, it's a gift for them to get to experience. And that's, and, that's the, and that's the problem. A lot of women don't value or have self-worth. A lot like, of women... I'm sorry? Oh, no, I'm saying, like, it's just, it's never too late to learn it. It's never yeah, too yeah. late. Yeah, of course not. Of course not. Of course not. It's a constant evolution. Oh, my God. Like, I feel like I'm repeating myself. Like, I mean, like, deja vu, rather. Deja vu. Because it's going to be constant repetition until we can really get it in our heads that self-worth, value of self makes you reconsider a lot of things. That yeah. That's why restriction is, like, the worst measurement of self-worth worst measurement and self-worth and going back to having children is yeah like you said i mean there's people that are um ad adopted and that have been um sent overseas like a whole thing and there's people that give away their kids there's people that can't have kids and it's a whole thing and and Honestly, this one might tick people off, but I feel that only a woman can make that decision. I don't like when men feel like they can tell a woman when she can or cannot have a baby and how she should have it and when she should have it. or Because it's her body. It's her womb. It's her experience. That's why I truly hate... Um, but can I ask... Know, huh? Go ahead. I feel, I feel both ways. Because I also feel like, well, it's the father, he gave the seed. So I'm not saying that he had, he could tell the woman what to do with her body. But for me, just personally, he gave the seed. And I'm not going to... Uh, consider I, him? No, I'm just saying, like, if I wouldn't, if I wouldn't take their seed, I'm not going to sleep with him. If, mm -hmm. I would, if I wouldn't birth your child, I'm not going to sleep with you. If I would self worth. If you're not willing to have his baby, well then girl, what you doing? Because I, I also think like I don't think the rise of the feminine means like not honoring the masculine. Cause like I feel like for me, my masculine side is the side of me that says, you know, like for example, when we wanted to do this, the masculine side of me is like, okay, pick a time. You know, like the masculine is the container. So I feel like we have to learn how to honor each other and see both yeah, i agree i 100 and i 100 percent agree yes i'm not because i'm i'm married and um it's always a balance of his opinion and my opinion because we we're raising children mm -hmm. so yes i most definitely think it's um it is a balance it is most of i agree 100 percent and like you said, like, it's the thinking. You have to think, you have to analyze, you have to do. Mm -hmm. and, but what I, when, I, when I say the rise in the divine feminine, I'm saying that we're not tapping into our intuition. We're not bringing forth 
that spiritual background behind the thinking. Why are you thinking to do this? Mm -hmm. Let's go deeper. 90% of our society, especially here in the United States, aren't. And I don't know how you feel about religion versus spirituality, but I think even religion is patriarchal. Mm -hmm. Anything that's truly spiritual is considered evil, you know? So, I mean, it's, it, this is extremely controversial, you know? This is, these are really deep, 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 deep controversial. Uh, at the end of the day, when we get back to spirituality, <laughs> It is all an experience. It's all a game. And it's as deep as this lifetime. I was a, I am a female life, lifetime. I've seen my lifetime as a white man in the South. I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen myself as a, a black man. I had a lot of masculine lifetimes. That's for sure. <laughs> so there's a reason why I came in as a female this lifetime. So. I mean, I um, I most definitely resonate with individuality mm -hmm. because not all people can fit under the umbrella of what's wrong and right at the highest understanding when you no longer have these physical bodies. Because that's happened to me too. I've had a near-death experience and I've seen my consciousness outside of my body when I was 12. So I understand I'm more than the body. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, when you don't have any of this, you have to remember that this is the time of the Aquarius. So you, ha you have to um, come forth with no judgment. And that's what I always try to do my best is not to judge anybody. Like, okay. You know, and a lot, of, a lot of times I don't go into it more than that because, you know, just listen to it. Yeah, I'm sure there's a reason why this happened and this person's doing this and everything's for a reason. So it's a matter of how you interpret it. How do you react to it? How do you handle it? You know, everyone's going to react and be different because every individual ego has been designed, orchestrated in a way that's going to make them react a certain way to their life decisions. Mm -hmm. So there's no judgment at the end of the day. So that's what I always try to, that's what I always try to be. I do have an opinion about things, but at the same time, it's just an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Whatever. I feel it. Yeah. And I agree. It's not about judgment. Cause honestly, like everything everyone like it's all about perspective and i i do my hardest not to judge people and even if i don't understand where they're coming from when they're they're making a certain decision just being like oh okay well because i understand too on a spiritual level like we're all gonna as eventually like consciousness as consciousness ascends and it becomes a unity consciousness it's all just one collective like remembrance of experience so it's like oh well thank you for having that experience because i'm gonna learn i'm gonna be able to benefit from you learning from that experience later on so there's no judgment because i know that like what you do is also like um contributing to what i do and how like so there's no judgment at all and there's no need to label anything good or bad wrong or right because it just is and there, we don't have like we don't have to always put a label on everything and we don't always have to like have a something to say about everything or you know just anything you know like just experience and live and and love and enjoy and like honor yourself because you like you are the prize you are the gift like you are like consciousness and humanity like you are what everything is after if there wasn't something special about your consciousness and your free will then there wouldn't be a whole spiritual warfare going on like if you weren't a prize there wouldn't be people who want to get you to buy into their game so it's like tap into yourself tap into your dna talk to your ancestors talk to your higher self like empower yourself love yourself and thank you melissa because now you got me inspired i'm like i can i really want to detox i i really feel like that's coming for me then i cannot stop wanting to eat like things i don't want to eat but um yeah. You can do whatever you want to do. 
You just have to believe in it, do it. Um, I know you know your self worth, right? So go for it, sister. Yeah. In that note, I'm gonna go. Um, this was this was a beautiful conversation. Um, you know, we can continue it any other time. I don't I don't mind. Just let me know. Um I love this is the deep conversations I like to have and not talk about what was on TV, what show was on and <laughs> you know, who's playing and all this stuff. Because now it's time for an evolution. It's time to change yourself, know your self worth. You know, even if you're on the the IG and the YouTube and the this and the that and who's leading who, because we know, me and you both know that leaders don't mean shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are our own leaders, right, girl? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the numbers don't, right? Tell them, don't be fooled by the, the numbers because this is not a popularity contest. That's one thing Spirit does tell me. It's not about the popularity contest because a lot of people with the numbers sell out. Even when they're spiritual, they sell out. So, yes, Love this was beautiful. Indeed. Peace, peace, peace. I Thank you. Bridget, huh? Thank you, Bridget. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Peace, sister. Yeah. Love you. I love you. She's always on here. She's I love her. She's always supportive. She's um she's glorious too. I'm not gonna say who she is, but she's a glorious soul. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Um so yeah, you wanna you wanna close it up with the message for everyone and and we can go from there. You want it like a, a message, sum it up? I would just say, love yourself, honor yourself, make love to yourself. Like, don't limit yourself because that's the only limits you have is what limits you put on yourself. And this is your journey. So you be the one to write your story. Like, don't let other people write your story for you. And every day you wake up, you can start a new chapter you can make the bold changes that you've always wanted to make. You don't have to answer to anyone or follow anyone else's formula. Just be yourself because like in a world where everybody is trying to be somebody else and where everybody's trying to like play a facade, like just be yourself and love on yourself. Even if at first you only do it at home <laughs> or you're afraid to do it in public, just, just love on yourself because I feel like, a life that's well lived is a life that you live from your heart and with purpose. So when you when you exit out of here, like what do you want to get out of this experience? Ask yourself that and then every day work to like like manifest it every day because everything is now. You already are ascended. You already have overcame the situation you're in right now. You already have like done everything that you want to do so just be in the moment and love yourself because that's the most powerful choice you can make especially in a world where like you're constantly taught that you're not enough or that you have to like buy this thing or go to this place or whatever you know like just love on you because only you can love you how you want to be loved yes 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 beautiful sister indeed um i think this this year a uh, theme or maybe lifetime theme is self-worth value self for me i'm going to say that because i've come a long way to valuing myself and discipline and not accepting rest restrictions as a form of discipline and um healing and self-love like you said self-love that is the biggest 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 representation of self-worth is love loving yourself like you said unconditionally behind the scenes with people because like you said no one can love you more than you at the end of the day mm -hmm. no one can love you more than you so all right and i love you <laughs> i love you too sister i love you so much <laughs> love you thank you so much uh, for you. Uh, being here today thank, thank you, you. Because I don't really like to share on the internet. I'd be like, 
just journaling and like doing my little podcast and just living so yeah thank you yeah i hold the safe space we don't let nobody evil in here (laughs) 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 take them out (laughs) all right thank you so much for your space thank you so much i'll see you Oh, you know, you got me. We talk all the time. You can hit me up anytime. I'll talk to you later. What's up? Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for your time. Love you all. I love you all. Thank you so much.